Hi everyone, it's Elia Nichols from Florence, Italy. And Terry Sidford from Park City, Utah in the United States. We are so Welcome excited back. to be back. Yes, I know we took a little break, but uh, we wanted to come back um, and start doing our bringing our world together from Italy to the United States and really uh, talk about some, some different things than we've been talking about. And today we're gonna to be talking about embracing change and thriving in the face of change, uncertainty, and the unknown. And I know that we've all been going through that. So we're gonna shine a little um, positivity on you today. And I wanna follow up to see how everyone's doing uh, in regards to COVID-19 in your particular country, wherever you live and in your communities and um, in whatever stage you're at with this. And as you know, in America, we're in a little bit different stage than in Italy. Yeah. And um, we also want to shine the light on how you can thrive during this time of change, uncertainty, and of course, the unknown. Um, so as you know, we are in a little different place than you are. Um, but what's, what's different than when this all started for us in America is that I've been talking to a lot of people and they're, they're all telling me, you know, we, we've been doing this for six months now or seven months and we want to take more control because we really don't know what's going to happen. Mm. And we don't know what our leaders are going to be doing in our particular communities, different states, because governors have different protocols. But the one thing that we know that we're going to do is that we're going to be leaders in, in our own lives. And we're going to do what we need to do and we're going to do the right thing. And that is social distancing, wearing our masks and washing our hands. But we're going to keep moving forward. So that's what I really want to talk about. And I know that Elliot does too, because we've talked here and there in between and it's really made a big difference. We've learned a lot in our own personal and our professional lives. Right. And we want to share fact, those I've really things been with looking you. Forward. Yeah. I've been really looking forward to today because I feel like the tables have turned, unfortunately, you know, at the beginning I was the COVID expert because I was the one living in Italy that had the most cases in the world. And we were in, you know, this very strict lockdown and now no, we're out of it and, and we're, we're fine and life is fairly normal, fairly. And then we see what's going on in America and it's just heartbreaking. So I've been really interested to talk to Terry today because I, I don't want to concentrate on it the entire time, but I do want to know how America is doing, how you are doing, you know, and, and your friends and your family and people and everything. So, um, you know, Terry, it's really interesting because our, our past guest, uh, corporate coach and psychologist Renee St. Jacques, which you'll of course remember she yes, was our guest yes, as a psychologist when we, when we were talking about all the family, you know, kind of an emotional issues that we were all dealing with. Um, Renee recently said, and I'm going to quote her, she said, never before has emotional intelligence been more critical than in our world today, whether it's resilience in a post COVID world, or courage to navigate conversations about diversity, equity, and inclusion. And she said, businesses can't just survive, we have to thrive. We have to work better together to cross the finish line on ambitious common goals. And she said that related to businesses, but I feel like that's absolutely relatable to, to we as a community and as a country as well. We, to thrive, we have to unite together to cross the finish line. We can't just um, do it, by ourselves, I, I don't think, you know, in, in Italy, we were fortunate that we had our government demand that we stay in the house. There was no, you can choose for yourself. You got fined, you know, you got seriously big fines, 250, 500, 800 euro. If you got caught out and you, and you weren't out, but it, it worked, right? It worked. So it and it was, and it was the same everywhere. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. The entire country had the exact same rules. Right. And I felt like in America, I thought this is so, it's so sad that there hasn't been this, you know, kind of strong leadership saying, this is exactly what you have to do. And it is not an option otherwise, because we right. proven luckily that, that what, what we did, which was not fun, but it worked, you know, 
So yes, and 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 it's interesting that everything's changed. I mean, it's it's kind of now we're we're like looking at you and thinking, you know, we were at the same place concerned about Italy and how Italy would get back on its feet, and now you're looking at us like, you know, how are we going to do this? But I think your point is so well taken about we need to be strong and help each other together, yeah. regardless of what's going on. I mean, this has been a journey for all of us. And, um, and, and this, this, this embracing the unknown. We, none of us know what's gonna happen tomorrow, the next month or right. six months from now. So how can we help each other as countries, as human beings? And, um, and, and I know, you know that you and I can help irony. with that. And we won't, we'll talk about it, but I wanted to comment on one thing that you kind of mentioned in the intro. There's an irony to helping each other when you basically can't be together, right? And this is one of the things that we came across in Italy where you're in quarantine, you're in lockdown, you can't physically go help other people. So how do you, how do you help your community and the people you love if you can't physically be with them, right? And one of the things that I was talking with a friend today who has some friends in, in Florida, and he called his friends, he's Italian, he called his friends in February and said, this is horrible. This is the most horrible virus you can ever imagine. Please take it seriously. Do not leave your houses. Do not blah, blah, blah. And these people did it, but they were the only people on their block in, in Naples, Florida, who literally have hunkered down and got, you know, the grocery store to deliver everything. They've literally not been out of the house in a long time. Everyone on their block did not do that. They've been out, they've been doing barbecues, they've been living a fairly normal life. And every single person on his block at the moment has coronavirus. So it kind of shows you like coming together as a community means almost like supporting each other in, in staying in, I feel like, you know, and really taking the mask seriously and the hand washing and the social distancing. Yes. And also, I know you're so right about that. Um, and before we kind of, we, we, everything opened up, we thought, okay, I mean, I, my, myself included that, you know, I was so excited to go to the, to get my hair done. You know, I mean, I just thought that was the coolest thing <laughs> ever. Well, it was the you coolest know? thing. It really was. You're right. Even with my mask, it's okay. But, but we really do have to support each other in doing the right thing right now. And uh, because what, everything affects e each other. And, and I think that's kind of been the Absolutely. paradigm shift too. A lot of us have just gone through our lives and we don't really realize that everything we do affects our world, affects other people. Mm -hmm. And I think we know that more now than other. And on the other side mm -hmm. of the coin of that is our mindset. Mm -hmm. and, and Elia, you and I have been through this from the beginning. We've talked a lot, every, like every week through the whole pandemic and quarantine. Mm -hmm. And we have learned how to thrive. Right. And, and it starts in our mindset and, and being a leader and saying the right things, because I know as a coach that our mind is very powerful. Our words and what we believe create our reality. And oh, yeah. we get stuck in that, that, that wheel of listening to the news and then we kind of pass it on to other people and you know, things are gloom and doom. And it's so easy because it seems so real. But we're Absolutely. here to tell you, <laughs> yes, that there is... There is another way to look at this, right? Okay. So Absolutely. share with me a little bit about how you have been dealing with things and, and your family, how you're doing now, and some of the things that you learned in your personal life and career Absolutely. and how to thrive. Yeah, too. Um, yeah I, I actually think that one of the biggest changes that has happened over the, the, the past four months has been an awareness about um, triggers in my life that led to stress and that led to one of the things I was dealing with, and we talked about this a lot, even on our Facebook lives with, with Renee St. Jacques, we talked about it. One of the things I've most been dealing with, and I think a lot of families have as well, is the, the being, you know, quarantined with, with your children, you know, and your, your husband and wife, whatever. So this kind of we can't leave these walls and what that does to the relationships. And at the beginning, I was having a really hard time. You'll remember, I mean, I talked about it. I had panic <laughs> yes, attacks. I, I was going crazy. Yes. I was, you know, I, I have two young children, they're two and five, and it was just so much to, to deal with and handle all the time. And I got to a point where I just had no resources left inside of me. I had no calm left. I had no patience left. And finally, after we stopped our last Facebook live, I contacted my like 
long-term psychologist and she does Zoom meetings. And I said, listen, I got to get a handle on this because I don't like myself right now. And I don't like the, real, the effect I'm having on my children. We were fighting all the time. We were screaming all the time. No one wants that. And so she and I met weekly or every two weeks on Zoom for like two months. And my house is a different place. And it's all about that I had the time, which I didn't really have that much more time, but because things have been forced to kind of sim be simplified and slow down a little bit, I was forced to put my awareness on us, you know, on this house. Yes. And so I really realized what the triggers for me were of screaming at the kids or um, losing my patience or losing my calm. And now mentally, as you were saying, I'm thriving in a way that I haven't in actually a while. It was probably pre-COVID because I was so, I was just going, 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 going all the time. And that puts stress on your relationships, even with your own children, you know, I mean, especially yes. little kids, whatever energy you have in the moment is completely passed on and absorbed by them. And now that I've found this just kind of calm, I enjoy them so much more. They have become like little angels because I am calm and I'm, and I'm, you know, transferring that and it's changed our, our household. And now if anyone raises their voices, it's like, it doesn't make sense anymore. It stands out so much. And I think that that was only possible because we were forced to just stop for a long time. And I don't think that it will ever go back to how it was. I think we are all, because of this awareness, and now we have the tool, I have the tools. I understand what triggers me. I understand how not to get to that place. And I can yes. stop it. And it's, it's been, I mean, I don't think our family's ever been this good, you know? And so that that's wonderful? been one of the, it's amazing, actually. Mm -hmm. Now that I'm past the quarantine, I actually think, and we had, we, we questioned this. You and I talked about this a lot, but I actually think that a lot of us in many ways are much better, much better yes, than we were absolutely. in February in many it's, ways. It, it's kind of separated the noise of what is not important and what is important yeah. to us in our lives. And we've kind of gone down, I, mean, I feel that we've gotten down to the basics and, those, yeah. and realized that we were so busy and there's so much going on and we're looking a month uh, uh, you know, six months, what vacations were going on that we forgot to listen to what the basics are yeah. and even and our to live hearts. in the present and pay attention. Yes. Pay attention to our hearts mm -hmm. and our minds in the present to understand what we really care about and what we don't. I mean, my priorities yes. are very different right now than they were. Yes, absolutely. How, Which what, is a good thing. What have you, I, yeah, I think it is actually, I think it is. It, it's a lot, they're a lot simpler. You know, they're a lot simpler. Um, Hallelujah. What, what about you? <laughs> yeah, I know. But isn't it sad that we needed a pandemic to get to that? I know. I, I, right. I agree. I, I think it's the lesson. Yeah. There's always, that's, that's one thing I want to reemphasize is that at first when, when we feel like we can't control something and there's change and there's uncertainty, the unknown, really it's a gift because we have an opportunity to see things differently instead of being set in our, our, our old mindset and our yeah. own reality, we were forced to see a new reality. Mm -hmm. And it was very unsettling. And we were grasping with, what do I need? What's right? What's wrong? Um, am I okay? How can I live like this? I'm sure people are all relating to some right. of these things. Um, but I also settled down too. I mean, I had days where it was not, not fun and, and they were, I, was, I wasn't even myself and I didn't understand that. That hadn't happened for so long. And I slowed down. I started to see the gifts. I started to feel grateful and appreciative for what I have. I started to look around. I could feel things and, and see things that I didn't normally see. Simple little for things. For example, can you give an example? Oh gosh, if, if I can say it without crying would be, is going to be huge, but I've had these magical moments with my elderly mother who has dementia and we FaceTime and I drop everything when she calls because she just 
is a different person and I try to connect her in a different way, you know, and she throws me kisses and you know, tells me that she loves me to the moon and back. Um, and, but it means so much dif a different to me now that I know I can't see her and that something could happen to her or whatever. And I feel the same with my boys that I don't get to see that often. I listen to every word they say. I, I actually think about what I say to, to them. Mm. I don't want it to be no noise. I want it to really? be meaningful. Mm -hmm. oh, interesting. Interesting. And same with my husband. And I, I think we appreciate each other more, even though we've had days of really being irritated with each other. <laughs> Just, <laughs> yeah, which, you know, in the same room and house for so long. But um, yeah. a lot of appreciation for the simple things, cooking meals together, the mm -hmm. home that we have, where we live, nature, our health. Nature, uh, absolutely. Absolutely. That's mm -hmm. been one of the biggest things for me. We, we moved to where we live now. We live in a, on, a, on a little hill right outside of Florence. And basically you're in the Tuscan countryside, but it's a 15 minute drive to Florence. And we're, we were kind of like city folk when we moved here. And it took us a long time to get used to it. Now, because of the quarantine, we would take daily walks. We would go bike riding every day with the kids because it was, we could, we were on this back street, right? And I, and I started to realize how, how much I had not been connecting to the nature that I live around because I, w I still had my mind in the city, even though I've been here for like two and a half years. And it's one of the things that has changed me the most in this quarantine, that's changed the most, is I don't want to be in the city anymore. I, I, I literally, I'm not interested in going to Florence. I don't want to step foot in. It feels dirty. I'm, I, can, you know, I feel a little scared because of the virus and all of this. And I'm just so happy to be living where I live and see nature. And my children who are very young are like, why would you want to live in a city when you can be surrounded by this green? I mean, it's just amazing <laughs> the difference yeah. Yeah. that this has get like that this opportunity, um, has, has brought to us. It's been really interesting. It's been amazing. It really is. We have, and we live in, in a country also, and we have people coming into the city wanting to purchase homes here. I mean, in the yep, groves, same thing here. in the groves. And I, I've been, I've been, I just wanted to give a shout out here. If we take a quick little break, we have a yep. comment from a yep. dear friend of mine, Mary Slater from South Africa. And I'm so happy that you're listening. And I just yeah. wanted to read some of your comments um, because uh, you, you def you've definitely been going through a lot there. So you're saying um, sense of community, definitely, but leaders do need to lead. Good point. Um, and I think, Mary, one of the things that we're trying to say is that, yes, some of our leaders we're not agreeing with right now, and especially in America, and I'm sure in, in your countries too. But when you don't, you can't control, you know, except for elections and things like that, um, what they're doing right now, we could be a leader in our own lives mm -hmm. and in our own communities, and that that's what kind of the opportunity is here. So thank you so much for your um, your comment, and I know that you're probably going through a lot there in South Africa as well. So it's around the world; we're all dealing with it differently. Yeah. Um, so back to you, Elia. Um, I know that Italians are probably looking at the U.S. and trying to figure out what's going on here in, in America. And I know it affects your, it, it's affecting your tourism. So how are you, your community and Italians staying strong and coming together yeah. knowing um, all this? We, first of all, I just want to say that obviously we're so heartbroken and, and worried for America. Italians love Americans. There has always and your family's been a there. Between my yes. families in Louisiana and Washington, D.C. So absolutely. Yeah. Um, so we're, you know, we're all worried. We, I think everyone in Italy just hoped that it would never reach America in the way that it reached Italy. And now it has, unfortunately. It has had, of course, an enormous effect on uh, the Italian economy in general, but especially on the tourism uh, sector. America makes up the biggest market for tourism in Italy, hands down. And so many hotels and restaurants have already folded because the biggest season is from March to October. And, and they've already lost half of, you know, the season and, and, and no clients, you know, because mainly th things in the hotel industry opened up on June 3rd, but 
um, that that's still three or four months lost. So a lot of places have already closed, unfortunately. Um, we know personally many hotel owners and they're struggling so much. They're struggling. The people that are coming right now are, are of course, mainly Italian and then some Europeans that have been driving. Um, myself, I was, I was organizing a retreat, a wellness retreat in um, yoga and, and mindfulness, body, body language and voice, everything, awareness, all this stuff, breath work. And it was going to be in Tuscany in October, 2020. And we've had to postpone it to spring 2021 because none of our American clients could come. So of course it is impacting our economy hard. Right. What are we doing about it? We we're really all kind of going locally. Um, everyone is trying to discover places near, you know, near where we live that we haven't been to before, that we haven't explored enough. I personally set up a tour today in the marble caves of Carrara, which is where Michelangelo went and got his big chunk of marble that he used for David. And I've always heard about How these tours, cool. and, but, but I'd never been. It's an hour and a half away from Florence. And so we're going in August because it's just one of those things that you don't want to go too far, but you... We're all, you know, biting at the bit, crunching at the bit, whatever the expression is, to get out and travel and, and see things we haven't seen besides our, our houses. So right. people are trying to support locally, basically. Good, you know? good. So there's a good thing um, that's coming out of that. It is. Yeah. It is. Because if we do not help ourselves survive in this very difficult time, how in the world are all these hotels and businesses and restaurants going to stay alive, right? So we've personally already been to two different hotels around Tuscany to support <laughs> locally. And then in August, we're going to be going. Yeah. That's great. So so you can that's see there's some good things. There's some really good yeah. things that can come out of this. No, and no, that's just, sure. you know, really connecting to your community. It makes and, you be happy you know, thankful for, for what you have around you. Terry, how are things, how are things in America? Um, and, you know, I would love to hear like some truth about how it really is, but also, you know, you mentioned, we've mentioned that it is possible to thrive in a time of change and the unknown. And I was wondering what you specifically, I mean, you talk about courage all the time and you, you know, you're a, you're a coach. I would love to know what you can tell our listeners about the benefit of change and the unknown given the current situation that we're all dealing with. Elia, I would love to because I feel like I've been going through this personally with all of you. And even though I'm a coach and I, that's what I coach about and I'm here to, to tell everyone else how to handle this, I've had to experience this in a new way that I've never done before. Mm. And I, I've known all along that adversity and change and the unknown um, creates resilience if we can learn how to come back from that. Um, in fact, there was a quote I wanted to, to um, share with all of you, which I thought was wonderful. Our greatest glory is not in never falling, but in rising every time we fall. And so resilience is really the difference in when we come back and know that we can come back from adversity or change or the unknown. And really there's mm -hmm. magic in that because you find out what you're made of. You find out what you're capable of. And next time something happens, you're like, you know, I got through that before. You know, I'm, I'm stronger than I, I, I thought I was. In fact, I probably learned something about myself and I learned some new tools. So I came out better. So I'm, I'm thriving now because I really can handle anything that comes at me. So, so it's really courageous to, to, to be resilient and do it gracefully. I use that word a lot, which, Elia, that was something you asked me. I said, Terry, now how do you do that gracefully? Right. And, and grace is really kind of, um, it's, it's a, a refined movement. So it's oh. doing it with elegance. It's coming out of this hard place, which we're all in. And how do we come out of it? Kind of like a flower that's been stomped on and it could still keeps coming up out of that stomped on soil. Mm -hmm. and it comes out mm -hmm. to become this beautiful, colorful, thriving flower. Yeah. Um, that's eloquent. That's beautiful. Why do you think it's important to be grace, to, to use grace right now? That's an interesting word for this moment. It's a, um, that's a great question. It's really about showing that it's okay. It's doing it with more class 
and calmness with a grounding sense about you, even the way I'm talking right now. <laughs> you know, I kind of felt that it when I was talking about it, that it gives people a sense of calmness and like, wow, look, if she can rise and come out of this in such a graceful way, wow, maybe I can do that too. And don't we all want to do that and be grounded? Yeah. And Right, because there has been so much fear and anger, justifiable anger and frustration caused by this whole situation, especially in America right? Because you, you add mm -hmm. on top of that all the race riots and all of this stuff that's going on in America right now. It's like this pressure cooker. Mm -hmm. And I can see that that is especially why it's important to, to think about grace and perhaps humility in, uh, in this moment. Yes. Um, that's one of the things that, that I was you know, working on kind of from a psychologist was that I was not being graceful. I was being you know, an, an explosive firework anytime I just felt bad. And it was, mm. it was ugly. It was ugly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's really good. El Elia, that's such a great um, segue, I guess, in a way, when you said that, mm. that in the beginning, I felt like it was okay. We almost gave ourselves permission, all of us to mm -hmm. like, yes, have unknown emotions. I mean, like, we've never dealt with this before. That's okay. It but right how moody now, we were, we were constantly, you and very. I were constantly moody. <laughs> Yes, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, you know, how are you doing today? It was very real. And, but now because it's... That it's, was our, excuse me for interrupting, but that was our way for dealing with that insane unknown of that moment. But it's not that new unknown anymore. It's a, there, we're in a different stage of unknown and uncertainty than we were. Yes, yes. And I, I think it's our opportunity right now to dig deep and now be very uh, deliberate in how we think. Think about you know, our, you know, our actions and our emotions and how we're affecting our families and our communities and our world. I mean, you talk about the riots. I mean, there's a lot going on here, a lot of emotion going on. And there's a productive way to do that and a non-productive way to do that, I feel. Um, but in the beginning, they're like, I don't care if it's productive, I just need to get my feelings out. And that's understandable. But after things calmed down, and I think that's where we're all at right now, it's been seven right. months. It's right. time. It's time to not make that excuse anymore. Like, you know, we need to settle down. We don't know how long this is all going to go on. Um, I think that's different here than it is in Italy because you probably feel more so calmness. How, how do you do? Yes, we do. Absolutely. And I've worked, I've worked on it. So I know this, but how do you do that, Terry? How do you calm down or, you know, approach something with grace? I mean, is there literally a process, you know, something you can do yeah, sure. others, maybe? Uh, yeah. I mean, I don't always do it gracefully. I mean, let me tell you that. First of all, I'm human and I, 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 I work for 80% as my perfection at least, um, or 70% because hundred percent is just not real. Um, but what I do is I, I really, I really look at my thoughts and my actions and, and, I have to calm myself down and if all of a sudden I'm, ups I'm upset, I get outside, I get space, I, I get quiet. Um, I get away from the people that my, I think are uh, the, the problem or irritating me or whatever. Mm -hmm. Or even if I don't know what that is, I just go do find something that calms me down. And sometimes that's meditation, a book. Um, there's different ways to do that, listening to music. And then I ask myself, well, was I, was I, what are you thinking? What? Am I thinking and is it true? And is there another way? And then I listen for the answer, first of all. And then I ask myself, is there another way to look at this, another perspective? But you, you really do need to calm yourself mm -hmm. down, ask yourself the question, listen, and then see if you can look at it from a different perspective. Mm -hmm. And that usually does the trick. And as you say, you know, really, is this, a, a, is this really a problem or is this an inconvenience in my life? Like, for example, with your, you had told me about your, your mom and dad, and you can't visit either of them right now, even though you yes. desperately want to. I would yes. assume you have had to approach that with this kind of technique, right? Oh, that's probably been the hardest thing for me. And I, I, I feel that I've had to look at it differently and that my mom's safe. She's mm -hmm. really more, safer than if we were visiting her. 
Mm -hmm. um, we can FaceTime. That's, I'm very grateful that we have, we're in this day and age that we can do that. So I've really had to look at it that way. Um, mm -hmm. And it's very simple, it's simplified. Um, yeah. if, if it's more about me than them, then it, it doesn't yeah. go in the right direction. Yeah, I agree with that. We, I was supposed to go with the kids to Louisiana in July. Um, we have, we, we've had to spend like, months, oh, like eight your months. family so do summer. Yes. Camp. Yeah. I haven't seen my family since December, since Christmas. And my kids desperately miss my parents. And I desperately miss my parents. And, and having to not, you know, having to cancel our trip in July was really heartbreaking. It made, made us angry. It made us so disappointed. And at a certain point, my parents and I, we kept saying like, well, maybe in August, maybe we'll go in August. Well, maybe we'll come in September. We'll make, and finally, literally like two weeks ago, we just looked at each other and we said, the only thing that matters is that we're safe and healthy. Yes. So hopefully we can see each other in December. If we can't, hopefully we'll see each other in the spring. But we've kind of just stopped planning. We've stopped yeah. trying to put like a fixed date on it because I think all of us know right now that we can't, right? It's we so can't really unknown. plan. Right. It's and so uncertain. unknown. Yeah. But and it becomes I, simplified. We've all done better mm -hmm. with it. You know, li living with this idea that we're we're not going to go anytime soon and they're not going to come anytime soon and just living literally living in the present and talking to them on FaceTime and just not putting the pressure on ourselves. It's actually made it a lot easier. Isn't that amazing? Isn't it? It's yeah. really, it's remarkable. Some of the, the good things that have come from all this, but if we slow down enough to, to look at them and see them. Yeah. So I want to ask you a question, Elia. Okay. Um, <laughs> so do you feel stronger and more resilient from all this? You know, how is it, and has this changed you? And, and will this go on long after um, COVID is, is gone and out of here? Yeah. Yes, I feel much stronger and much more resilient than before. As I, I mean, I've already talked a little bit about some of this, just the calm that I have inside of me now that I haven't had in a long time. It, that has been very helpful um, for me. Also, because our family is closer now, we, I know that if something is going to happen again, if we have a, you know, if we go back and, and there, we, we, we get, you know, can take the infections again, what, what is it? If the virus returns, let's say, um, I, we know exactly what to do and we know how to approach it in a healthy way, right? Whereas mm -hmm. before it was so unknown that we were all just freaking out, you know? Um, mm -hmm. so I feel much more strong and resilient because of that. Even with my business, I've noticed, um, I, I, right around February, I was gaining this amazing momentum in my business. I was being contacted by tons of companies and private clients and, and I had been hired to do workshops all over the place. All of that stopped because of COVID, all of it. Well, not, not all of them. my private clients in America stayed because I could do it with Zoom, but all the ones in, in Italy stopped. And of course, that was very scary, you know, because I, it's, I, I'm, my business is relatively new and I was finally seeing, you know, this huge success and momentum. And, but I pivoted, I changed my offering slightly. I did, I made it very current and anything that I could do on how to communicate. In fact, one of the, the things I wanted to talk about later was that I'm, I'm offering a new webinar coming out very soon on how to communicate and present professionally on live video because it's one of, big one, been one of the biggest requests that I've had. And that's been one of the ways it's that I've big. Been in the, yeah. yeah. Yeah, because everybody is, is using it for, to do business nowadays. And there, yes. a lot of people are not, are not doing well in it. So no. um, it's been a big request. And so I'm about to offer a new webinar in this. But what also has happened is that now that we've opened up again, finally all of those old clients are coming back. And wow. so there's resilience there too, right? In knowing that I was doing everything I could. I did pivot. I did keep working. I made, I took new roads. I, I, you know, I created new offerings and, and it, it benefited me. I got, we did our Facebook lives. I mean, I've got, I've actually gained, um, you know, the, in, in clients and recognition in this time, which was not necessarily what I expected from the beginning. 
Um, yes. And so I would say that there is resilience to in knowing that because I didn't just kind of stop and hunker down and feel failure, uh, but I kept going that I actually think now um, my business will probably even do better than it was before, you know, and, and that, that I can trust in that. Um, I feel much stronger and, and more secure uh, business-wise for that reason. That's a, the epitome of resilience is what you just said. And, and that inst if you would have stopped and just been paralyzed by this change and like, I, I don't know what to do. Instead, you just got busy and, and we both did. Like we've been, yeah. you helped me with your skills in communicating and we were working on, you've been, you, I mean, you were just going, you, you started right off the bat, started going. And I was like, you know, took me a few minutes to figure out what to do, but, <laughs> but we never stopped we're going, okay, what can, what can we do now? What's next? And, um, you know, you helped me do, you know, and actually encouraged well, me will greatly. You, will you talk about it? Will you talk about, um, your yes, courage I, lead webinar? I would love for you to tell everyone. Thank you. Thank you. You know, and Elia really encouraged me to do a webinar and I'm like, no, I, you know, when all the speaking live speaking in person stopped and I, I started, you know, doing a lot of Zoom and, and it, the thought of doing something because in a little all, box. Just so everyone knows, all professional keynote speakers and speaking engagements obviously got canceled because of the impossibility of social distancing. So, so Terry all of a sudden found herself without gigs, without her speaking engagements. Right. So, and I was Terry, just, thank you. And I was right at the top of just, you know, really catapulting into the speaking world. And I love being in front of an audience and just, you know, speaking in front of a computer was just odd to me. And so I started a lot of Zoom, you know, in the Facebook Live, a lot of Zoom groups and things like that, started to get used to it. And um, Elia did encourage me to do a webinar. So now I do, I'm so proud and excited to mention to all of you that I do have a webinar coming out very soon within the week. And it is called The Courage to Lead. And it's based on a four step process, based on four stories in my own life and lessons I've learned on how to be a leader in our own lives, which we're talking about today and also in your work. So um, if you're interested, just type anything in the comment and I will make sure that you get the information on that that's being released this week. So both of us have webinars. So if you're interested, make sure and put something, doesn't matter, say interested in the comments and we'll make sure and contact you. But this is, really is how we've, we've thrived, Elia. We, we, we never stopped. We took breaks. Yeah. We took breaks, but yes, we just kept. Absolutely. We slowed down. Yes, but we're like, okay, we're going to find a way. And I know, um, you know, we only have a few more minutes, but that we could go on and on and on um, about this. But I do want you all to know that Ellie and I um, really have been through that emotional roller coaster um, with you. And we absolutely. have found a way to keep going and thriving. And um, you just have to learn how to kind of dance in the moment and, and be okay with the uncomfortableness of it. And you'll come out ahead. And I, I can guarantee you that both of us feel like we have. Um, so Ellie, also, I know, tell people a little bit about the retreat that now you've had to reschedule so that people can get excited right. about that, possibly. Yeah, absolutely. No, it's going to be amazing. It's called the Retreat of a Lifetime. And it takes <laughs> place in Montepulciano, Italy, which is this perfect hill town in Tuscany. And basically, four entre female entrepreneurs, including myself, um, we'll all be leading the retreat. So one owns the bed and breakfast, which is a stunning place. And there's a breath worker, Sandy Abrams. There is a yoga meditation, applied neuroscience teacher. Called, uh, her name is Donna Valifuoco. And then I'll be leading the <laughs> mindfulness of your body, your body language, your voice, and how we can change what we're doing with our body, body language, and voice mm. to basically present yourself better and communicate better, um, communicate yourself better. So that's the retreat. But of course, there's going to be so many amazing things as well, like hot air ballooning through Tuscany and oh my truffle goodness. hunting and amazing ah. things and blah, blah. So everyone <laughs> should come. It'll probably Sounds be amazing. It's going to be amazing. Absolutely. Yes. So if and you go to my website, elianichols.com, there's the, the retreat info and link to that. So. Wonderful. I'm going to put myself on that webinars. maybe list. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
I'd say with my webinar, if you're interested in learning how to communicate and present yourself professionally in live video, just put interested in the comment, in the comments of our chat. Um, Terry, I have another one last question for you, actually. Yes. I was curious what, because we've talked a lot about like me, what, what has changed in me, what have you specifically learned from this experience? What have been the bigger changes and what positive outcomes have come, have come for you from this pandemic? So many things. I know I'm changed forever, long after this is gone. I am just, uh, I realize that, that I can maneuver around the unknown, the uncertain times in my life, and that I can find the good in it. I can find the opportunity in it. And that it's okay, because this is what life is all about. Change is something we can count on. I, I know that I will never take my family for granted. My parents, my my boys, my husband, and um, and any extended family. Um, I will never take my community, where I live, my home, and the things that I do have for granted. Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm looking at the simple things in life and being just enjoying them. So I think I I have taken away that I can come through a really tough time and feel more connected to myself, my community, and the people around me. Mm -hmm. And that's a really good feeling. Awesome. Um, that's, that's going to be with me for a long time. Yeah. And how about you? What's, what are you going to take with you? Um, oh, gosh. Uh, that, that I need to listen to my instincts more. Uh, I'm not very good at saying no. I never have been. But because of this crisis, I often you know, people invite me to do something or say, can you do this? And I'll, I just, if my, if my heart says no, I just say no. And no one is offended anymore. No one, you know, there's a different relationship now to risk and comfort, you know, what you're comfortable with. And it didn't, it didn't used to be that way. And I think everyone is much more open-minded and less judgmental nowadays. And that um, I hope will stay with me. The, the trusting myself and, and saying, yes, I can say no, that's fine. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, it's funny, Terry, I feel like I'm less efficient than I used to be. I'm not as good at multitasking. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, <laughs> but I do think it comes from that we've been required to slow down and do less. And my mind and body just doesn't want to go back to where it, where it was, to how incredibly fast and functional I was. I, I think my body and mind say, no, no, that's not necessary. That was not a good place. I think I was living off of a lot of adrenaline in a negative sense because I was pushing myself to do as much as physically possible. But the results yes. weren't great. You know, I mean, right. was as I said, there was constantly stress and tension in, in my house, in my life that I hadn't even recognized. And it's not there anymore, you know? It's fantastic. And Isn't that a gift? What a gift. Yes, oh my gosh, it's, a big, it's a, an enormous gift, enormous. Yes. And really, my relationships are much better. And they, and they were good, but they're much better than they were. And then one last thing that I want to give is maybe hope for America. Yes, yes. We, um, in Italy, our, we, uh, we are having summer camps right now. They are open with very strict measures, but they are open. And even my daughter's nursery school reopened just for the month of July. Really? And yes, and it's been lovely because um, some of you will remember that you and I were worried about like the trauma that this was going to have on people in general, especially on children. And luckily, uh, we have found that there has not been. The kids were so happy Wonderful. to see other kids. All of, I mean, all of them. Like when, we, when you talk to their parents, like the kids were so happy to see other kids. There wasn't the, I don't want to leave you, mommy, which we were all terrified, yes. you know, especially with yes. young kids. There was none of that. Not, not, that's not true. It's not that there was none of that, but it was minimal. It was very mm -hmm. minimal. And... We have been doing long distance learning, you know, since March. And I think everyone agrees that long distance learning is horrible, especially for young children, especially elementary school age, but really all ages. No one likes it. It is much less effective. It's very alienating, alienating. Mm -hmm. Yes. And we just had a, a Zoom call with our school, with our teacher. My son's going into first grade and my daughter's going into pre-K. And they Cute. said... 
that this is what school's gonna look like in September. And I, I thought maybe this could give some hope for America. I think school's gonna be better than it's ever been. They have, they have to do some classes outside because to allow for social distancing and there's a lot less contagion when people are outside. And so the schools are gonna alternate and they have like our school, for example, has like an arbor and they're gonna put desks outside. And oh, how wonderful. Rotate in and out. Can you imagine how much better of a learning experience that will be to be it's able to wonderful. learn outside? Well, we want to hear more had... about this because we don't know what's going to happen. So, no, so exactly. such exactly. a beautiful we, thing. It's so beautiful. We are not doing any long distance learning. I think some wow. places are doing wow. maybe two days a week, three days a week, but, um, but we're not for now. Um, and so the kids will go back, but, but they have raised the amount of teachers so that yes. you could have smaller groups and keep the social distancing. So my children oh, instead will have more teachers, so more, you know, s small groups, which everyone learns better in small groups, and they'll be able to learn outside. And I wow. don't know if that's going to be a possibility in America or not, but I really think that my children's learning experience will be better than it was yes. before COVID because of this. Yes. I, I agree so, 100 percent I love that. You know, so you have to keep us posted because I think yeah. everyone's gonna have to get creative on this. And yeah. but that's so great to hear the good news of that, you know, that there's some good yeah. things that are gonna come out of this. And I know that we could keep talking on and on. I just Absolutely. I want to make sure that we've answered any questions from our listeners and you know, like wrap listen. things up and thanks everyone for listening. Um and, and I just wanna I just say our, yes. our look, we have a comment from Mary Lacherbo, who is in yes. Italy. And she said, I'm taking advantage of going to museums. I went to Pisa. I went to Carrara. Corey's good, Mary. You can tell me how yours was. <laughs> I'm going to Venice. I want to see whatever I can without dealing with the tourists. And that's true because in Italy, we never go anywhere without tourists. And now we can, and it's rather luxurious for us. And she said, Remember, life is what happens to you when you're busy making other plans, John Lennon. Oh, and that's that right, is Mary. so that's great. What happened to us before COVID, right, is life passed by because we were so busy planning not yes. being present. And I do think we all will be more present after now and after this. I can't imagine that, that any of us can escape that. No, no, absolutely not. Mary, that's such a great quote. I mean, it's a perfect quote for what we're going through. Um, and anybody else have anything else to say? Please um, uh, go to the comments um, if you want to hear more. Go to, uh, we will have uh, Elia's website, my website. We'll be following up with all of you. We wish you all health. And just in conclusion, and, and happiness, not just health, but happiness as well. But in conclusion, um, I just want you to know that we're all in this together as human beings living in different countries but we can help each other stay strong. And there's always an opportunity for growth and learn, learning and thriving in the face of change, uncertainty and the unknown. And it takes great courage to be a leader and to see something good coming out of this experience. And maybe, just maybe, we needed to recalibrate and say no to things that don't serve us any longer and say yes to the things that are most important. So stay strong, stay happy, keep thriving, and know that we're here with you in heart and soul. Yeah. Anything Thank else, you, Elia? Man. No, that was perfect. <laughs> okay, great. We're with you. We, Italy is with you. We love you. United States, is, thank you so America. much. Thank you. We'll stay close. Wow. We're going to get through this together. And stay tuned, and please um, make sure, and, and any other comments before we, we sign off, and take care of yourself. We'll be responding to this webinar. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> I'm excited. So um, we will be sending it out. Look, look on my website, uh, terrysidford.com, and it'll be coming out soon. All right. Take care, everybody. All right.